Good evening. This is Terp Talk Live. Tonight brought to you by the law firm that is owned and operated by one Rick Jacklich, the big dog. Rick, thanks for doing this. Thanks for being a sponsor all throughout this tumultuous time of COVID-19. We're going to play this like it's a post-game show, except we have no football to do post-games about. Right now, we should be at practice tonight to listen to either the coach or the kids talking about right now. So I'm going to throw it to Bruce like we always do. We have Bruce Posner. Bruce, what do you think about the fact that there's not going to be any football in the Big Ten this fall? Well, I'm, I'm fairly upset about it. But, I mean, if it's a health situation, I understand it. But I'll bring on the expert tonight, Rick, because from the three of us, he's tied most tightly to the football program, always has been, always been a tremendous supporter. So, Rick, I ask you to start this thing going. Uh, from your knowledge, did the Big Ten's decision, was it one that wavered yes and then no, then yes, then no? How did it eventually come down? Jackler's Law Group clients are happy clients, and here's why. Our lawyers are experienced, hardworking professionals who fight until you win, and you pay no fees until we do. If you've been injured in a car, truck, or train crash, we meet you where you are and when you can. If you've been in a crash, don't wait. Call the big dogs now. Let us handle the insurance company so you can focus on healing, and you'll see why we were named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country. Yeah, Bruce, that's a great question. But my frustration, I'm going to go there first, is, you know, they tell us what great men all the players are, and then, in my mind, with this decision, they turn around and treat them like little boys. And they dictate a decision to the players instead of going to the players and saying, you guys are men, you know the risk. You know, we've had two, three players maybe here and there opt out. It seems like all the other players, all the other coaches say, let us play. I'm really disappointed that the Big Ten didn't go to the players and say, what do you want? And it was a decision made not by coaches, not by players, not by athletic directors. It was made by the presidents. And as much as they tell us it's about safety, Bruce, it's not. It's about liability. It's about the, the fear of the university presidents being sued as a result of COVID. Because I can tell you 100% at Maryland, the players are much, much safer, much safer in that bubble of the football team than they are than any other student is going to be on that campus. And you saw that just recently at Notre Dame and North Carolina and Oklahoma State. The kids are coming back. If they're normal students, they're out partying. Whole sororities are getting this awful Wuhan red death disease. It's terrible. But the coaches at Maryland have had complete control. These kids have been back since June and they've tightly controlled who's in whose room, everything is controlled. These players are much safer on the football team, in football, than they ever are in the regular population. Okay. So, of Rick, whether that's uh, going to be able to be held together is my first question. I've talked to Don Marcus, formerly The Sun, and some other football folks, and their take, sort of the inside-out take, is you can keep a bubble through training camp, but once school starts, for anybody who has classes, it's a general population. Do you think, I mean, they can't really do an NBA or NHL bubble. Do you think they can hold this together if they actually got into the process of going to school that they could maintain their bubble? I do. I do think that because, you know, when you go to school, you just separate the desk away from each other. You're 10 feet apart. Everybody in the class is going to wear a mask. You walk out of the classroom, you walk across campus, put a mask on. Don't go to the VU, don't go to Bentley's, right? Be smart. And the football players have been preached that by the coaches. They have been smart. They have stayed in the bubble. Uh, so I, I do think they can contain it. You know, my big thing also, Wayne, is why make a decision today? Why not wait until you really, really have to make that decision? And to me, that would be when air players are on the plane to Iowa, right? That's when you make that decision or right before they get on the plane. To Rick, me, I'm disappointed. Rick, now, from I thought that they were going to play when I saw the last test result, 
that I believe was August 20th, where it was zero positive tests for 195 people who took the test. That's incredible. So it tells, it's unbelievable. It tells us that's impossible given you know what we've seen from this virus. It's unbelievable, and it just shows you the important control that the coaches have. One of the great job Loxley has done with this, and it's really smart too. And you know he has these kids separated. He's got two to a room, and he's been smart about it. You know he's not putting the first string, second string quarterback in the same room. One kid gets it, the whole room's out, right? You got to put your starting quarterback in with the third string long snapper. Right. No, it's no, no. That, that's definitely it's so. In fact, the pros are talking about taking the backup quarterback and quarantining him. So, say Tua winds up being the, the starting quarterback, then you take Lance Lejean, if he's going to be number two, quarantine him, let the third string play in case something happens to Tua. But what I want to ask you is, I believe that had they had the football players go virtual, all right, along with playing football, well, where, why isn't that somewhat of a bubble? Why isn't that? And were the players willing to do it? Well, if they don't adhere to it, that's the end of it. Of know? course, exactly right. Give the players a choice. Give them a choice. Bruce, can you imagine your kids played, your kids played sports in Division One, right? Yes. Can you imagine how you would feel, you as a parent, if they ripped away any one of those seasons of any one of these kids? And how much would your kids have just been, for the rest of their life, thinking, oh, my God, they took away one-fourth of my college career? And can you imagine some of these kids that are trying to make a professional league and need that last year to make it? It's it's awful. Well, and, and, and that, you know, I was an economics major, Bruce, before I went to law school. Everything is cost-benefit. And you weigh this, to me, every sport, every woman's sport, every other Olympic sport at Maryland depends on football and basketball. You know, women's basketball loses $4 million a year at, at Maryland. How long do you think that's going to keep going if they lose $33 million because they can't play? Because they're worried about liability instead of worried about the the safety of our students that's what should be that's what the presidents are saying they're worried about that's not what they're worried about well, well this is the liability and the fact that a lot of these maryland is not flush with cash yet could you withstand a lawsuit if somebody actually got sick especially after they now we know that they went and looked at this you know they made a decision that they say is based on safety if they reverse the decision now how liable would you be if somebody actually got sick and they blamed it on football? So I don't want people watching this to faint when they know that I'm a plaintiff's lawyer. <laughs> I represent people who are injured from the negligence of others. But I don't see that a COVID virus transmission with as much control as Maryland had, that anybody could say that Maryland was negligent. They're so far beyond that. They've taken such unbelievable care of these players. They've gone so far beyond what would reasonably be expected that I just don't see the liability unless somebody hits me in the face with different facts at a different school. Rick, you, you talk about uh, these kids. Like, here's what I always thought was the out for, and you know, for the for the league or whatever. They gave every kid the opportunity to opt out with no scholarship penalty, with no eligibility penalty. In other words, you can't blame anybody if maybe the parents didn't want him to play. Okay, he can opt out. And I don't know how many were opt out of Maryland, but it seemed like it was a handful. And two or three, maybe six. Four? It was six. I heard at the end. But so that's okay, six are out and 90 are in. Right. And you so rip the rug out of the 90? Right. We lost Chiga Conquo, tight end, who was on the Mackey Award list. Uh, we lost two offensive linemen, including Johnny Jordan, and then a few kids who really weren't slated for playing time. So I think it came well, down to six, three well, of the, which. The quarterback from last year opted out. Yeah, after, right. Uh, right. Right. Well, listen, but they have the right to do that. In other words, if they, 
none of those kids were penalized as far as their scholarship goes or anything. Am I wrong? In other words, one hundred percent right. And can you imagine you give them that choice and they say, "Hey, we're in. We're in for the black and gold." Right. Then, no. Now. And right. Yeah, you rip the rug out from under them after asking them, "Are you in? Are you? Are you? Are you out?" And they've risked all through practice since they've been there since June. And yet you tear this away from them. It's awful. It's awful. And Rick, I got here's answer. the problem, Bruce. Yeah. Here's the problem. There's no leadership from NCAA. I don't know what they do for the universities. And Mark Emmert, where have you been? Where's the leadership? Where was the leadership from the basketball tournament? Bruce, they panic. One guy in the NBA got got sick and they panic and they just shut down tournaments at halftime of conference tournaments. Are you kidding me? A little bit of planning. We've known this was coming since December, right? The country cut off flights from China in January. We get into March and the NCAA is amazed that the virus is going to affect people. How do you not have planning? How do you not say, look, we can play this entire tournament in four bubbles around the country and do it. No planning, no leadership ever. Bruce, this goes back. The first dealing I ever had with the NCAA, I represented two women lacrosse players from Maryland back in the early 1990s, okay? The Diamondback came to them and they had these girls pose and they're in Maryland sweatshirts right, right before their final four. And the next thing, the Diamondback runs their picture and runs a little byline under the picture saying, Sweatshirts available at Terrapin Connection. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my goodness, this is you've allowed your image to be used for a commercial purpose, which is a violation of NCAA rules. NCAA comes in and suspends the girls for two competitions. They come to me. I was teaching in Maryland at the time, Monday nights. I taught a, a consumer economics course. The girls are crying. They're like two competitions. This is the final four. We got two games <laughs> left in our, in our life. The semi-final and the final championship game, like, help me, help me, help me. So we get the rule book out, and it turns out the competition is defined by the NCAA as a game or a scrimmage. So we call Maryland and say, hey, schedule two scrimmages. Go call Loyola or Salisbury or somebody. Have NCAA refs keep these two girls out, and you're done. Everything's done, right? Perfect. Go to the NCAA said, hey. Problem solved, the girl sat out two scrimmages. And they went, no, 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 here's your, here's your rule book. Bruce, they fought us until I was walking into a judge's courtroom to argue the injunction against them. And finally, we get the call saying, okay, no mas, the girls can play. They got no money. They, they, they've been lied to by the people that ran the pictures. They didn't get anything out of this. And you're going to suspend these girls for the biggest games in their life for nothing. And they were so inflexible and there was no leadership there at all. And I've seen that from the nineties all the way through to 2020. No leadership, no leadership, no leadership. I mean, look, North Carolina didn't get in trouble for having classes you didn't have to go to, yet Maryland goes on probation for giving a kid a ride to class. Where else are you gonna Wait, get? Wait, how amazing is that? The North Carolina, right? And the excuse from North Carolina was we had other regular students, non-athletes, in these fraudulent courses. Mm -hmm. So that's not an NCAA issue. It's like that's the end of calling them student athletes, right? It was ridiculous. How do you not get get pinned to the mat? Yes. We'll see what happens with Kansas basketball. Yeah. Paying, hey, paying let's, not bring up, let's not bring up Rick Patino. All well, right, hold on right. a sec. He's, he's coaching again, Rick. How can he be coaching again? All right. If I bring up the NCAA, it gets Rick all torqued up. And if I bring up what constitutes a goal in an NCAA lacrosse game, it gets Bruce apocalyptic. So Bruce, when do they change that rule? When do they change the rule that you can ricochet a ball off the top <laughs> pipe of a lacrosse goal, have it ricocheted in midfield, yeah. and that's a goal? Yeah. Well. I got a buddy who's a UVA guy, and I tell him, look, your lacrosse championship was tainted. Your basketball championship was tainted. That's a walk. Both championships are tainted. All right, let's not turn this into a UVA hate group. Listen, it is absolutely unbelievable that Mark Emmer showed no leadership. 
He had five months to set everything up. He did nothing. Look what they're doing with basketball. Basketball is going to work out. Why? Because they're planning. They're setting it up right. They're doing everything they should do. Where was Mark Ember? Where was the NCAA? They can't make a decision, Rick. They're incapable Bruce, of coming the NCAA, the NCAA has nothing really to do with football. It's the Power Five. The NCAA still runs basketball, but even the NCAA says they have no real standing with these five conferences. But Wayne, I don't think I don't I don't see anything that the universities get from the NCAA. They'd be better off just saying, "Hey, this is our show. See you later." The conferences are going to run this. It'd be better for the students. It'd be better for the fans. It'd be better for the universities. And all the NCAA is drained all this money off. Yep. And what does the university get in return? Nothing. And no leadership from Emmert. It's unbelievable, Bruce. It's unbelievable. All right, Rick, I've got a big question for you, okay? We talked about it last night. For We did the show last night between me and you. But uh, how much damage could this do to the Big Ten? If the power, if the other three conferences, the SEC, the ACC, who we know is making a power grab, trying to surpass the Big Ten, and the Big 12, same for them. I mean, the SEC is kind of sick. How much damage could it do to recruiting? How much damage could it do to the program? And like Nick Saban said today, spring football without any of the best players is JV football. And is he wrong? I'm not so sure he's wrong. Who's going to play? What great players are going to play when the NBA, the NFL Combine is within weeks of the season? It's not I think you're going to see every first round or second round potential pick. How about fifth How about round? That? Fifth I mean, round guys make a lot of money too, Rick. Fifth round guys make a lot of money. Seventh round guys make the team. You know, there's a lot of NFL positions that go to college players. And, and Bruce, as you know, as you know, at Maryland now. There used to be 27 sports, 700 plus athletes. Maryland cut down to 19 sports. All of those sports are carried by football and men's basketball. Every other athlete on that campus is only playing sports because of the money that's brought in by football, mostly, and by basketball. And, you know, that's why Turgeon never gets enough credit and Mike Loxley never gets a, as much credit as they deserve. They get their paychecks because they're carrying all of these other teams, all the pride of Maryland through every single sport. And those, boy, boy, you talk about having to cut scholarships all the way down the line in every other sport because you're losing $33 million, plus you're losing recruiting to these other leagues, and you're losing the, the TV. Unbelievable. Plus you lost all the money from the tournament because you couldn't plan that in ahead of time. Disaster. Coach, Coach K today said that another year of missing the NCAA tournament could be a fatal blow to the NCAA tournament, basketball wise. And he's right. All these things. He's right. Bruce, we may have that fatal blow from losing last year. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable the hit that it's going to take across every single athletic department. Well, Rick, it sounds like that we're pretty much in unison that the three of us think that playing is the preferable thing to do. Sooner or later, you're going to have to play. This is a virus spider might not go away. And if you don't want to play, that's fine. But for those who do, you should be given the choice to go ahead and do so. But there certainly is uh, another groundswell that's not on the show that says, look, this is all about health. And these games, if we can't afford to have Major League College football, then, then we can't, but you can't ask these kids to go out and play when you can't go to class, when you can't have indoor dining, when you can't have all these things that we can't have, then somehow we ended up making football or the NCAA tournament a priority. And I, I, I do understand that, and I always thought that if you couldn't really go to class, you weren't going to play football. Whether you wanted to or not, if you can't go sit in an economics class, you can't go play football. And well, they can know, sit in kids an economics have a choice. class. They, just, they can sit in an economics class. They just have to do it virtually. Uh, and I respect this virus. And I've had two friends die from this virus. I've had other friends be 
you know, such on the verge of death, they wish they died from this virus. It's unbelievable. But if you respect the science, this virus is a totally different effect on people our ages with our medical conditions than it is for 18 to 20 year old kids. Just like it's totally different for kids that are under 10, right? The science tells us that a kid under 10 can't cook this virus enough to transmit it, okay? Get those kids back in school as quick as you can, I think, if you follow the science. I respect this, and I I know it's such a tough decision, and people are, you know, torn about, good Lord, we got to take care of the kids. But when you cut through that and you say, let's look at the facts, and the facts in this situation are these particular kids are safer playing football because of the bubble they're in and because of the protections the coach can put around them. And, and, and they're much safer, much safer than anybody at a fraternity house or anybody in the dorms. Much safer. Here's the bottom line. I get that and you weigh that. It's like, it's like the, the president of Oklahoma State said, like, you guys are blowing it. You're blowing it for fraternities. You're blowing it for parties, you know. Soon, if you have it your way, there'll be no football. Uh, Bruce, you had a question. Carries so much at, at, at university, it really it, does. That's oh. why it's so important. Bruce, you had some questions about where this goes with uh, the the heart ailment stuff. What did you find out about that? I really, yeah, I, I was going to ask Rick. You think that was the straw that finally broke the back when there was a a mitocardis? I don't even know what the word is. Absolutely. Uh, Right. Possibly. And you know what? When I heard that, I said, well, maybe that's the case. But every time you hear something right away and then you look deeper into it, there's there's always shades of gray in every story. But one story that doesn't have a shade of gray, Rick, and I know this, all right, and I've been talking about it forever, is the way, and I don't know where you stand on this, but I think Paul Feinbaum said that there's a tremendous fear when the players started to organize, okay, when the players started to say, hey, we want to play, all right, you're making this decision for us. When Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields, the twos, the, the two top five picks in the draft this year, when they said, we want to play, and these guys have nothing to gain by playing, they're going to be first picks no matter what. How much does the NCAA and the conferences fear the possibility of player organization? On a scale of 1 to 10, I would say a 12. So that is a huge fear. I mean, it's unbelievable, Bruce. I mean, the future of NCAA college football and basketball is going to change very, very soon. And you're going to see players that are going to get benefits, tremendous benefits, which they deserve. Um, It's unfair. Let's just talk about, you know, we talked about yesterday, the number one jersey, right, that's hanging in the bookstore at every school. And somebody comes in and buys that. Well, who gets that money? Well, it's not the player who's wearing number one in the field that made that number famous, right? And why shouldn't that particular kid get a cut of that money? They should. But the NCAA is terrified of the players organizing they're terrified of uh, these lawsuits that have been around the country. They're terrified of uh, the whole system changing, but it, it's going to change. Yeah, there's no doubt. And uh, for the players, for the NBA, for the NCAA to generate millions or billions of dollars for the March Madness and for the players to get nothing, it, it's absurd. And if they keep pushing the players, you're going to hear those two words that everybody fears revenue sharing that's going to start to come up and the argument by guys like you who probably would never take the case but uh are the players employees are they not employees you know it's a tremendous tremendous thing bottom line though rick when i think about it all right they gave every player the opportunity not to play with Absolutely no penalty involved. All right. Correct. Pretty sure I'm right about that. None of the Maryland players who opted out were thrown out of college, had their scholarship removed, were denied that year of eligibility. 
And if that's the case, and you had hundreds of players opt out, then we could say they shouldn't be playing. Right or wrong? Right. But that's absolutely right. right. That's not what happened. To the players, they're men. Give them a choice. Give them the facts. Let them decide. And then treat them like men, right? If you give anyone a choice with the facts, honor their decision. That's what America is all about. Well, you look at, well, you look at baseball, guys. And baseball's had about everything that could go wrong, go wrong. But the league's going on. The game's going on. They're playing doubleheaders. Nobody died, all right? Nobody is like, uh, yeah, there were some real sick people there. And and it can happen. But it can happen, you know, football, how about paralysis? Are we going to stop playing football because of the possibility of paralysis? Yeah, that could happen. But that's a decision a player makes and his family makes. You right. know, every time you put on that football uniform or when your son put the baseball uniform and risk being beaten in the head by an inside pitch, that's a decision you made to white bait and just and your son made, right or wrong. So in other words, sports still have, you know, that element of risk. They get on a plane in the middle of the night after a game and fly home. How many things do we have to name that can happen? And uh, to me, a person takes that risk when they say, we want to play. And if, you know, for for somebody to say, you don't have the right to make that decision for yourself. Right. It, it, it doesn't make sense. And if there was a history or if something would happen, if they went to practice and 95 people got it, all right? Yeah, well, we wouldn't even talk about this. Of course. This wouldn't even be a discussion. But why do you make a decision on August the 15th when you have an opportunity to push the season back to October 1st like it's being done? Well, the ACC and the SEC, you know, they're coming after the money. It's, it's the old story. They're coming after it. And, and uh, if they play and the Big Ten doesn't play, what I fear is when it finally ends, what happens to the non-rev programs? You know, if you have a college with just football and basketball, well, you may as well just have two lower-level professional teams because that's all we need. A college is a broad experience. There's hundreds of athletes. They're all right, guys. Losers. Go ahead. Uh, I will in, say one thing if I could, Wayne, about, you know, Bruce brought up Major League Baseball. And I, I could not imagine, Bruce, as you know, my son played baseball all right. the way up. I could not imagine if my son made the Major Leagues this year – and I couldn't go to one of those games in an empty stadium. How do they not let just the parents come into a 50,000-seat stadium? And because watch they're, your trying to the major the, league? they're trying to protect the players, and that's what they should do. Yeah, shame. I get that. Put mom and dad in the upper deck, okay? But well, let them watch their kid break into the major leagues in their first yeah. game. <laughs> well, guys, other than, man, the O's look good. It ain't the beer cold. In closing here, I know with Rick since he came in last. Uh, does the ACC, SEC, and Big 12, do they actually play this year? I think so. I think oh, so. I think definitely so, unless something. If you, if you yeah. the benefits of the cost, I think they play. Yeah, I, unless something drastic happens. And that's always a possibility. You can cancel the season with a snap of a finger, right or wrong. It takes one right. second. To can't look what basketball did. Right. You can do it at halftime. Yeah, I mean, the Ravens are still playing. The Ravens are still on the road to the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, look, follow the money. And listen, you know it, Rick. I know it. Wayne, you know it. If the players were getting paid, all right, the football players and basketball players were getting paid, this would be a whole different topic. But they're not. And that's where some of the doubt comes in. Should they risk anything uh, because they're not getting paid? And that's what this could lead to, Rick. Because, you know, then a player starts saying, well, wait a minute, I could get sick with the flu. I could get paralyzed. I could have my leg broken, right? I mean, these things happen. I can be crippled, you know, anytime you step on that football field. And that's that's a question about football. But if there's You know what I feel sorry for, Bruce? As much as the players, I feel for every one of them. But I feel for Michael Oxley in particular and his coaching staff. They came into this, and they planned, 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 planned. They bring the kids on campus in June. 
They start practice. Everything goes right for them. Everything. They control so perfectly. They do such a great job. And then rug, rip it right out from under them. Hey, Wayne, I'll ask you something, all right? What's going to happen, all right, to Loxley recruits when they're sitting there watching Alabama playing LSU and they say, hey, wait a minute, you know, the Big Ten's not playing. You know, and guys are leaving. And this is not good. This is not good. Sure. I this said is- for the longest time that the best season Maryland could have, thinking this could be a canceled season, is to go into this zero for zero because I did not see this being a great uh, football season record-wise. I think Loxley's going to, if anybody can find a way to take advantage of this situation, it's going to be Loxley. And I don't think it's going to greatly affect Maryland. It could affect the league balance. But guys are at 40 minutes here. That's about the limit for one of these uh, video podcasts. And I really want to thank the Jack Litch Law Group for sponsoring us. It's a basketball and the lacrosse and then through this gap uh, from COVID. And now uh, I think we're going to start this as a video series, probably on a weekly basis, talking about everything else other than Maryland football, because well, there isn't going to be any. Bruce, any parting words? Yeah, parting words is I got to thank Rick for being behind us, sticking with us. Rick, we love you. You're the greatest. And uh, we really appreciate it. And I know the Jack Lynch Law Firm is probably thriving even through this COVID crisis. Uh, well, we did get a great piece of news just this week, and we were named by the Daily Record, uh, the newspaper of business and law in Maryland, as the number one personal injury law firm in the entire state. Well, we're proud that, of that. Right. That's, that's uh, something to really be proud of, and we're proud of you and proud of your support and also proud of your input. Your input is crucial to us all the time. And you're, you're like a go-to inside guy, all right? But uh, we really appreciate it. And thanks for doing this show, too. I appreciate that. All right, Wayne. Yeah, good yeah. terps. All right, you wrap it up, Wayne. Wrapping it up. Well, uh, this is a Tuesday. So if you watch this uh, tonight, uh, remember to turn in on thir- tune in on 1300 CBS Sports Radio and catch Terp Talk tomorrow. And as always, throughout the entire pandemic season, You can get the Sports Maven at 9 a.m. on 1300 CBS Sports Radio in Baltimore. Bruce, what do you have this week? And Monday, don't forget. Monday Monday morning, drive time. Bruce, where can they find you? In the nest, all right, on WNSD Radio. uh, But most important, or as important as all, TerpTalk.com, our videos don't stop. And if you go to YouTube, how many of our videos are up on YouTube, Wayne? Uh, Say about... 1,300 videos, millions of minutes watched. Uh, you know, it's the only place you can really find Terp sports anymore, unfortunately, is uh, watching the old games on YouTube. But we have uh, – what what a basketball season that was. For anybody who's missing that, you can take a look back and some great post games and see Rick uh, glowing there on the court as Maryland. Well, I, I, re-watched the, I re-watched the Minnesota game, Rick, and uh, – at the end of the game, I see you jumping in Turgeon's arms, you know, as if you were the coach of the team, brother. Yeah. Turgeon gave me a big hug after that one. So. I saw it. It was on, it was on national TV. Was All that right. the greatest comeback ever or what? It was, was beautiful. A- hey, Wayne, with those kind of numbers for your videos, do you think anybody watching this that has a business would call you and say, i got to sponsor these guys. I want to advertise on Turp Talk. Well, you got the exclusive, all right, on these videos. We have one other guy who's been with us forever at a much lower scale, but we're not going to interfere with your time because uh, you deserve it, Rick, and we appreciate it. And every time somebody watches a video from the past couple of years, they're going to see your pretty face there. All right. We miss the barking dog. See what you can do about that. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully, folks, we will see you again next week in the same format. And I hope the Orioles are heated up again and be in that playoff race. Until then, thanks for watching. Thanks for looking at all the videos on Turp Talk. We will see you soon on the radio. Good evening. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks, guys.